Central Club. Wales and Great Britain cap, double code breaker, man of steel, commentator and pundit, and an all-round sporting legend. It gives me the pleasure to warmly welcome Mr. Jonathan Davis. Nice intro. Been a while, man. Been a while trying to get on. Right, you know. Two years I'm here, in the making. I'm here, I'm here now. I'm here now. Yeah, thank I'm you here. for coming. Pleasure, it's a pleasure. How's things? Yeah, I'm good actually. Busy this time of year, you know. Just uh, a few things going on. You're then everywhere, and it's just uh, it's, it's weird because um, I suppose if you're in the public eye now, people want you know, I suppose. And uh, but yeah, it's I guess a little bit quieter after. Then I try and have a quiet summer, you know, enjoy the summer. Yeah. Just busy at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Are you still covering stuff on the rugby league as well? Yeah, it's like weird. People think that because you're a rugby player, um, you know, you were a professional rugby player and that was it. But I've, I've always worked through my whole career. The only time I was a, a, a full-time pro when I went to play in Australia in the NRL for two seasons. But apart from that, I've always worked throughout my rugby union career. I worked. Um, then when I went to rugby league, I worked three days a week um, as a salesman. because so I wanted to keep it real. So and I kept sport as my hobby. So I've always regarded sport, although I got paid for it in, you know, when I'm in league and towards the end of my career, I've always regarded it as a hobby that it's a bonus. So I wanted to work to keep you real because also you 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 keep your head on it because one, you've got enough time to work anyway because around your training. Secondly, you keep it real by to, by working with kind of normal people in a normal job. And then you realise how lucky you are to be doing sport you are so that's that's why i that's why i did it that's why i worked it was hard doing it but you know i just it, it kept it kept me real as mm. it kept you grounded yeah because you made to tell you you know i felt a good game bad game you go to work like you know, say oh you're a shocker mate yeah or you know you got to work on that but so it was yeah i just i just wanted to do it because i think it's it's in your it's in your dna like you know i come from a council house left school at 16 um went to paint and decorate it and it's kind of in me, you know. And luckily, it's I passed it on to my kids because they got a good work ethic, and it's nice that you know you have that because I think whatever you do in any any walk of life you do, right? It's you got to you got to work hard. Yeah. You know, people say some people are lucky. Yeah, okay, you inherit things and all that, but ultimately, I think it's if you've got a good ethic and a, a good work ethic, I think you know you it puts you in good stead for life. I think, I think that's really interesting to hear that from you because I think the documentary slammed is out at the moment. Yeah, it's yeah. been a bit of a success. It was brilliant because I was watching it. I was thinking people forgot because you had the seventy success. And they were brilliant, you know, uh, brilliant players, brilliant blokes, you know, and a lot of them are passing away slowly, which is really sad. But that's an, an age thing. Then you go, then you jump to the two thousands when they did the Grand Slam, um, and I, you know, I worked, I watched the seventies. Uh, played in the 80s, watched a bit of the 90s and the 2000s. I'd be very lucky to have the ups and downs of commentary. But I looked at the slam and I thought, I'll tell you what, a lot happened in the 80s, like, you know, in those kind of, in those few years. I just sat there and I looked, oh, great bunch of lads they were, right? Some of them are, are, are great, some of them not so great. So I just put a WhatsApp group out, right? And then I think it went about 30 of us. And 27 of us had a, a, a lunch and a couple of, well, a lot of beers in Le Mans then, a wow. week last Thursday. I was brilliant. I hadn't seen blokes for like, I see Ringo and Webby and, and, and Adrian Adley and all them, Rob Jones, but I hadn't seen Phil May, you know, I hadn't seen people like Kevin Mosley. I hadn't seen, uh, who else was there? Um, Billy James, I hadn't seen Billy and Ray Giles. All these blokes I hadn't seen. And it was and it was brilliant. As if we all go back together and we had a good laugh. Good afternoon. Yeah, we'll do it again. Yeah, yeah. What, what was it like watching that back? Because the, the sport has evolved so much since then. Yeah. I think it's evolved both on, on and off the pitch. Because the World Cup was back in the 70s, the Games were professional leagues. If they didn't um, go professional, then the IRB, as it was then, or World Rugby, would have lost control of the game because there was a couple of um, professional circuses on the, on the horizon. And I think it's you know it's, it has changed because players de deserve to get paid for it, um, and it's you know it's it's a a lot a lot of people say oh it's not you know it's it's not like the old days. I think it's a better game because you got better athletes. You know they a lot of them are generally collectively more skilled. 
because obviously they they work at it. We would t- train twice a week, so I think it's a you know it's a better product. What about in the sense of you know when I was looking at uh, that, that documentary and even like as a youngster in the early nineties, mid nineties, sorry, when I could just about remember uh, the rugby and the six or the five nations, yeah. whatever it was at the time. Cardiff Arms Park, you know, the, the, the atmospheres just seemed to be a totally different. It was clientele. it was brilliant because you know I I didn't play for any age group or any Welsh caps or nothing, just for my village. And then um, so watching going to watch Lenny play, and watch Cardiff, and then you know getting a chance to play for Neath. I I used to drive up from like um, Cross Arms or Trimsaran to watch Cardiff play upon the pool just to on a Wednesday night just to watch uh, Bish against Umzi. Oh. And the crowds were, and the crowds were there were, were amazing. And so I, when when you want to watch Lethley and, and Swansea and Swansea and Cardiff and Bridgend and Ponty and Neath and all that, it was just brilliant because the town were, was, you know, really vibrant. And that then, you know, obviously when you went to the Arms Park, it was uh, it was always special, the Arms Park. Um and they were always full. So there was like it was like a stage, you know, you had five games to, to perform at the international level to make your name. And uh, or four, and those were those were the days. So it was brilliant. It was a brilliant atmosphere, and there was a great vibe. Um, you know, playing for the club scene at that time because there's a lot of good players in the club scene. And I think what Slam showed was um, historically what was going on economically as well. Yeah, and, they and they the strikes and so well. the steelworks, and they and they you know, intertwined it brilliantly. Mm. But the with the rugby, and they played it up a little bit. You know, the England Wales thing and all that, as as the media do, but. It was a, it was a good show, and I was and I was really happy the the way that um, you know people looked at it and um, and, it, and enjoyed it more than anything because it was the eighties and the nineties are slightly forgotten because you know, we only we lost against France by a point to like, win, not to win the yeah. Grand Slam and they were a great side in in the eighties France but hey that's my sport for you then no no not always fairy tales no no I think one <laughs> kind of trending factor in probably some of these these moments in rugby with you though is although you know Wales might have just missed it or have been battered mm. you would always come out smelling of roses whether it was man of the match or I, I don't know yeah, yeah. I don't know smelling of roses I had a good kick in a couple of times all the, well, a few times to be honest and I had a good I just when, I, when you went to New Zealand yeah, I, I didn't maybe I didn't, <coughs> I didn't have the best World Cup uh, for different reasons um, but when, when I went to New Zealand I just wanted to prove a point that I was I'd be better than my opposite number wherever I played against and if all the other players thought like that, then maybe we'd have a chance. But you know, we we soon realised that you know New Zealand rugby was on a different plateau at the time, um, and they were they had diff- they were training differently to us. So um, yeah, it was. But you got to just you got to have your you know your own belief, I think, mm. and then your own pride in the performance. I've seen I've seen an interview where you actually said that maybe we should have went to somewhere like Canada or or somewhere, somewhere like that rather than New Zealand. Uh, but, but but saying that on reflection as well, John, like. Like you said, that might have been the catalyst to turn yeah. yourselves pro yeah. as well. It, it'd have been a, it'd have been an easier tour. And, <laughs> and, you know, we'd, have a good, we'd have had a good laugh. But the good thing about all the boys that I played with, you know, the really good blokes, and generally all of us got on. So yeah. wherever we were, and we went to Tonga and had a good kick in and Fiji, Fiji and some tour, more. Yeah. That was hard in New Zealand and the World Cup and all that. So, but I do. I think it was a realization playing against New Zealand how far behind the Northern Hemisphere was. Maybe apart from France. You know they were they were they were that much better, but they prepared better. And you know we didn't want to be paid for playing. We just wanted to be you know sponsors to look after us that our employers wouldn't lose you know wouldn't lose any any income. So it was it was it was weird. And I because I the reason I say maybe better if you gone to Canada, somewhere like that because on the back of that. 88 tour, a lot of us were disillusioned. And then I think that's where we went that north. Because of the triple yeah, and stuff? No, not, nope. it's because we we realised we weren't on the same playing level as mm. them on the preparation side of it. And prep is, is, you know, is everything. So if, and if we'd have kept, I honestly believe if we'd have kept together that side, you know, there was a 91 World Cup, England got the final. And I think that we would have been a strong contenders, you know, to, to, to do well in that tournament in, in 91. But unfortunately, there was changes after the uh, after the mm. uh, eighty eight Wales tour, so you know a lot of players lost a bit of faith in it. Really, you know the coaches was, were, were sacked. Some of the players went north, and that was the end of it. I, I will take it back there, um, but before I do, I want to just bring it back early. You know, to, to the club level of you, you know, yeah. starting. So you started at Neath, 
You know, that was yeah. your first club you yeah. was at then. Yeah. Um, you know, what was that like, you know, starting at a club? Because, you you know, obviously before that, you, like you said, you didn't yeah. have any caps in school or anything. No, I didn't I, 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 any caps. So, I, you know, I just played. I think it's the stronger you become through your failings. Because I, I think I look at it back now and go, you look at, I was from a, an area where we had three schools. Um, uh, what do you call it? Um, Gwenroth Grammar School. So, which was basically a Manith Maur district, which is Ponderberium School. Um, Kevin Knight in school, my sort of Van Gwenrath. Because we played then in the district, so we'd play against Cardiff schools, Swansea schools, Ponty schools, right? We'd have an armor in because of we didn't have enough people to select from. So uh, what that works is we then we don't have the ball. So when you have when you're not having the ball and you're getting battered by 30 points, no selector's gonna pick you, irrespective of what you do. Mm. So, you know, that, that's the way it was. Um, so then from having, you know, being that and playing on the back foot, playing for Trimsaren, you know, and uh, uh, under 13s, and 11s, then I went to youth and I played for their first, right? And, but I, I still believed I could make it. Um, so I kept on training hard. I kept on playing and really enjoying myself. We played, you know, we had a good side at the time. Um, we played in the Brewers' Cup against people like um, Rumney. What a great the Acti boys were playing, right? Yeah, uh, all those boys. They, oh, it was oh, Fennick quick, and all them. Quickly, Mark uh, Gaines. See, I remember all these names from when I was eighteen. We we we've interviewed John Acti. Like just quickly, like what was he like as a rugby player? Yeah, he's, you know they were good players. There was a lot of good players around in them days. You know, they, I came up against them. Webby playing for uh, yeah. Pretend Youth, Ringo. Uh, you know, playing. Uh, for Cardiff youth, it was it was difficult for us, but you understood that they were talented. But they had the, they had an opportunity, so I just kept on playing. And all of a sudden, uh, I had a phone call uh, on a Sunday night. I was in a rugby club and uh, having a couple of beers, and there was Neath nice, doing to play on Tuesday. I went, oh, it's my chance. Because Phil Bennett rang him and said, look, you know, as a kid in Trimsar and deserves a chance. So Benny like rang, and all of a sudden, from playing for Trimsar and I'm playing for Neath nice on a Tuesday against Ponty. And it was like they I remember they, I think it was Carl Smith, Gary Jones, and Shellard back row, Pemberthy, Boulderston. So you remember these these are years it's years ago. But it was just an opportunity. And then you, all of a sudden you're playing on the same level on the front foot. And these weren't going particularly great at the time. That's why they had uh, Brian Thomas come in, Ron Waldron uh came in uh, really, and uh, they Glenn Ball. And they brought a, a real tough element in. Yeah. We brought some really hard boys in, like, you know, um, from Pembrokeshire, Cardiganshire, uh, Bridgend, um, Neath Valley, Swansea Valleys. And we just played a hell of a rucking game. So, yeah. and I, I had the ball on the front foot then. So that was the that was a platform that I that I needed. And all of a sudden, when you're playing against the likes of Gareth Davis, Gary Pierce, Mark and Dacey, um, yeah, and John, you think, well, you know. I mean, Gives you the confidence. You've, yeah, you've looked up with these blokes because yeah. uh, they're playing on the first class scene and you think, you know, I'm on, I'm, as, I'm as good as these. Do you think that's maybe where, you know, if we did have that element of club rugby still, you know, because you, you, I feel like we may be missing people under yeah. the net yeah. through the way yeah. way it is now? Well, you look at, look at Shane. You know, Shane didn't do anything. Shane Williams, Yane Evans didn't do anything. So you're talking the two best wingers who ever played for Wales, and those two like you know, and, and those two uh, went through the net, but then they came through later. I think it's um, it's very difficult because of professional rugby now. Uh, I think it's it was for economical reasons that we went down to regions, uh, but I'm st I'm still a firm believer. Okay, if you've got four regions, if you've got three regions, if you've got two regions, right, and you have to be involved in it to understand what's the best number for Wales. You just can't. You know, which you are, you people are going to mention things from the outside. But the, what's the important thing is what's underneath it and underpinning it. And for me, that's where Welsh rugby has let itself down. I think because of the Premiership, and I remember asking Roger Lewis when he was, um, you know, the CEO, so what is the what's what's the purpose of the Premiership? Oh, and he said, oh, it's a um, did he say it's, uh, it's it's kind of a golden league or something? And I said, well, it's, and it's still the same now. They don't know what they're doing with it. So where where are the youngsters from the academy or the under twenties or the under eighteens? Where do they go then for the next step up to go into the regional rugby? And I think that's where we've we've 
we've neglected yeah. underpinning our regions, no matter what how many regions you think there are at the moment, if this right or not, we've neglected underneath it and we've we've lacked we've we've um haven't developed and given our youngsters the opportunity that they fully deserve. And have you ever thought of a way that it could be achieved? I, I think you've got to look at if you you know, what you have. If you, if you have a, if you have a, tw- a you know, a 10 or an 8 uh, team and you strengthen those poise with the, with the youngsters that we have, um, and, and also, you know, just maybe look at there's a permit system before because they, all, they always think, oh, yeah, we need to train, we need to train, we need to train. Sometimes you just need a platform for you to show your skills. And if you see an individual who's has got something, then you can grasp him and work on one work with him, you know. And I just I just feel that I think we need all of our best youngsters who aren't playing um, for the regions to play somewhere and have an and have a, a, an identity which would have been the Premiership. And I still don't think they know what they're doing with it. For me, that's where they got to look at. You got they need development at you know under fifteen, under sixteen, good coaches. I don't think there's great um, development coaches. Um, in, in the, our regions, and I feel that, you know, they need help as well. And it's all of a sudden, you know, they're, they're all thrust into these positions and have they had the experience and have they got the knowledge, uh, you know, to develop these youngsters mm. um, because it's, again, it's it's their job and they panic and they thrust. And, I you know, I think I've always mentioned that I wouldn't mind getting involved in it somewhere, but every time you mention it to someone in, in a relative good position, they tend to... You know, shy away because they 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 feel threatened by the fact that someone's coming in. I suppose you know. So it's um, and you can look at places. You know, maybe the grammar schools or the schools. Um, you look at all the best countries in the world. They've all got you know good school system, and I think we try and chop and change the school system. You know, where we had a good youth system, we had a good school systems. I'm not sure what the youth and the school systems are like at, at the moment because you've got these super schools. So I, I think you have to sit down and. And really analyze to see where's best. But the, the the most important thing is getting good coaches in and giving the youngsters a platform where they can play and underpin the regions. Look, because you look at it now, you, you look at um, Cam Winnett, he's come through, right? Thrown in. And you felt sorry for him. He's, he's played really well. He's, you know, his position play is good. His time is good. He makes me. He reminds me a lot of Mikey Raya, right? And I can't give him a higher compliment than that, right? You know, Mikey's a great player and he's a good friend of mine. But he's got time. And he's, he's got positional play. So he's come through. Um, and some of the other ones maybe haven't come through that that well at the moment because they've been thrust into it. And it's so difficult, you know. And it's not only the the skills and the timing; it's the physicality and the pace of it, which is difficult to adjust to. And I feel. You know, with Wales now, we, we are where we are because of maybe Team Wales and neglecting, you know, the regions and the and the and the development below it. Why didn't you coach? Because it's it's odd. Because um, I played, I was I I pl- I wanted to play every week, right? You know, I I, I couldn't understand players who would play a uh, train hard and then maybe for a little niggle that they wouldn't play. Yeah, for me, it's like having sex with no orgasm, like, you know, all week, like, so you're like, hey, what's, the fuck, what's the point of that? Like, so I just go, right, I play. So, and I go, if I, I have to, I put jabs into me, my knees and my back. I wanted to play, enjoy playing, right? And I've played all my career. So I started when I was eight and I finished when I was 35. And at the time, I'd had, a, I'd had a, enough of being in a tracksuit. Um, and maybe if someone had gone to me, or I took, because I was approached by Newcastle, to be player coach by John Hall. I was approached by Worcester um, to was be this early by on? Cecil Duckworth, yeah, in, 90, well, in 90, 97. Wow. To be their rugby uh, player coach. Uh, Rob Andrew went to Newcastle. Um, Les Cusworth went to uh, um, Worcester instead. <laughs> and I, you know, and I just thought, oh, look, you know, I just need a break from rugby a little bit. Um, my wife was diagnosed with stomach cancer, yeah. so that put you know a little uh, problem you know uh, to 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 the whole kind of career change really. So you know when you finish in rugby, you know and your wife's not well, you got three young kids under seven, you know your priorities change a little bit and your perspective and life and balance change. So then I just went, you know, luckily I I got I good I had good good friends in uh, television. Um, 
Ray Stubbs, you know Ray Stubbs? Yeah, yeah Stubbsy. So Stubb, I did a question of sport to Stubbsy a, long, a lot of times because he was the one who's, who did the uh, mystery guest. If it was the face things, they'd do the real guest. Yeah. But then if it was hands and outfits, it was Stubbs. He was doing them all the time. Right? <laughs> he got me to do it once. I remember he said, oh, can you do it? I was, oh, God. Because after the game on Sunday, rugby league, we'd have a good skin for like, could take Monday off. And he said, oh, someone's dropped out. Will you film uh, on Monday morning, Chester Zoo? He had me cleaning the elephant shit out of the thing that I was throwing up everywhere, right, on a Monday morning. <laughs> so, you know, we became friends. And then he gave me the opportunity to go, right, you know, I'll have a word with head of sport, Brian Barwick, and they gave me a chance. So that's why I really didn't go into it at that time. And because I enjoyed commentating and there was an influx of league coaches coming in defensively, I understood the, the processes they, would, they were setting in place and how, how, to, how to do it and how to break them down and everything. So the commentator then came a little easier to me and it gave me the flexibility that I could spend time with my kids in the week my wife passed. I could spend the time with my kids in the week. Okay, my, I moved my mother up from a council house in Trimsara and Delandaf. She thought she was the queen of Cardiff. So, um, <laughs> you know, and she loved it. And then, um, and, and that's, you know, you, you, you get momentum that way. And mm. luckily I'm, I'm still doing the commentary job, you know. There's, so. there's no age gap on coaching, though. You know that. I you? know that. I would, you know, and I look at it and go, and I'm not, I'm not egotistical enough to go. Oh, I can come in and run that yeah. and come back. No, but if, you, you, if I came in, if I you, did, you come kept in, up with the game, like well, you, you have people, you know, yeah, as a pundit, yeah, you, yeah, you know the game. It's just weird because people, right? You know, with the social media, right? Because I'm, you know, I'm 62 this year now, right? And um, they're looking at me and going like, oh, he's, he's dinosaur. You don't, you know, I, I, when you finish, I work with Keith Wood. I finish first of all. Um, so then I worked with Gavin Hastings. Then I finished there. Uh, then I kept on going. Then you had Keith Wood, Jerry Gascott, Andy Nickel, Martin Johnson. You know, did some work with Brian, uh, Brian O'Driscoll. Um, Paul O'Connell. Now, now I'm working with Sam. I work with Martin Williams. So you don't, you evolve as the game evolves, so you look at it and analyse it as the game changes, right? And the game is technically the same thing you're trying to achieve. Go forward, get quick ball, right? And create opportunities that you've got to, you've got to, you've got to take. But it's the, it's the analysis and the, um, the preparation that's changed a lot. But you go into camp and you watch these things and you, and you learn as you go along. So that's why... You just don't randomly turn up on a Saturday after being retired since 97 and talk about it, you know? Yeah. But that's what the numpties on social media think that happened most of the time. And if you say the wrong thing against their team, they get worse at it because it's all emotional stuff. So I've really enjoyed it. And you and if you look at it, all, all those players that I've worked with on television, I've got the same mindset on and, and, and they have the same kind of analysis process as you do because you still think you're a player even now although I finished longer than Sam I still think as a player rather than you know what happened there you know as a com you know as a commentator you could explain it what happens very quickly mm -hmm. and while you're doing it you've got to remember you see the try you got the referee in your year you've got the co-commentator and the commentator in your year you've got the match director in your year and you've got the video uh, tape guy talking in here, which angles do you want? So you've got to listen to five or six people talking and then trying to analyse what's happened in a split second to explain to the general public. So, you know, you've got to, you know, you've got to listen and try and get listen to the, the, the important one at, the, uh, at that particular time and then analyse it in a split second before the conversion comes. So it's, it's but you, it's like anything else. You, you learn... You know, as as and I've watched more rugby since I finished than I, than I ever did when I was when I was playing. Like you know, and you can't watch everything. You know, it's so much sport rugby on television, so much sport on. You have to watch what you know, what's going to influence the game that you're working on that particular weekend. So um, it's uh, yeah, I still enjoy it. It's, it's still enjoyable. Still enjoy. I still get the. I still enjoy the buzz I'm doing it. Yeah, there's been some iconic games that I've listened yeah, to, and just yeah, yeah. Well, it's been lucky because you you look, you know, you I listen to the great seventy side, then you know, I then you and I listen Bill McLaren commentate. Then who was your favourite commentator? <sighs> yeah, they're so different. Like you know, I've, I I have to say, you know, you, you get a lot, you know, the the Joey Barton thing now on television, and the uh, you know the the wokes and and everything, and the and the 
box ticking and there's so much talking about it, but I've been very fortunate to, to work, you know, from a presenter side, from Des Lynham, John Inverdale, Steve Ryder, that's the start. Then I had Claire Baldwin, then I had Gabby Logan, I got, I got Sarah Elgin, Hazel Irvine, right, which were unbelievable. They're all absolutely fantastic presenters at your job. Then, you know, I've worked with Bill McLaren, uh, Ray French, Dave Woods. Um, uh, what's his name now? He does. Um, then you had, of course, Eddie. So I've worked with, you know, and as a lot, a lot Alice Rikin, John Champion, who does football. You know, they, so they jump. So now, now I got Andrew Cotter, right? I, which I think Andrew Cotter is up there with the, with the best of them. So it's I've been so lucky, and then the pundits come along, then the co, I know the co-commentators come along, but they, you change and swap with them. And the only thing I say is that before, and I, I did thirty-six television, uh, thirty-six radio shows, you know, as well as doing my commentating. Commentating. So wherever they put there, they have to have the credibility and the knowledge to do it. That's the key thing for me. I, irrespective, you know, if it's male, female, black, white. You know, I, I don't really care who's there as long as they know that they're there on merit. And I think sometimes if they're not there on merit, right, they feel uncomfortable in that position as well. And they and they yeah. sometimes they, they, they will get exposed by it. And that's not a nice thing to do. I think the agents have got to have some responsibility. Of course. The producers have got to have some kind of responsibility not to push them in too early because it's brutal. It's like any other thing. It's brutal. You come in and, you, and you're not very good. Or you make yeah, a mistake. You get stand up oh, like a all of a sudden, and, and no, it's worse for them all it's because better. of social media. It's a jumping back. Oh my God! They'll all, <laughs> you know, they'll all come in and they'll all slaughter you, yeah, right? Yeah. And some, you know, I, I agree with some things that people say on Twitter, and I don't agree, but that's my opinion. Mm. And I, I know that's, an, that's a platform to give opinions, but I think it's all down to credibility. And I think that so I have seen some people pushed in, and they have been they have been expo exposed, and I feel sorry for them because they take longer then. To get to to get to a position where you know they know they can be. Yeah. No. Very interesting. It is. You know, you got to be careful. You can't say. You can't say. No, what, I know. What, sometimes I, you can't say what you really think. Sometimes you got to. You know, p people are just. There's no. There's not enough perspective or balance. But doesn't that show where it's gone wrong? Though? Yeah, it has gone. You know, you can't. It, it, yeah, it has. You know, sometimes you think, what, what's that person doing there? And I, you know, I've seen males and females in a position. I'm thinking, uh, they're not. They're not good enough at the moment, and they shouldn't yeah. be there. They should be doing maybe the lower leagues at the minute. And, and it's like anything else. When you learn, you have to learn your trade. You have to learn your trade. It just doesn't happen. And not very people, not many people can just jump. And if you can jump into a position where you have, you know, sat there be five or six million watching Sunday's game. Football is even worse. You know, I got mates yeah. now who I've grown up with in the, in the television world, right? Um, and they're doing the big events. They're doing the Olympics. They're doing the Six Nations. They're doing Match of the Day, right? They're doing all the biggies now, these boys. And um, they tell me that, you know, we'll get cra crap after games, right? Because no matter who you are, right, 50% will love you, 50% will hate you, right? And like I said, you know, opinions are like assholes, right? Everyone's got one, right? But in football, it's uh, they say it's hundred times worse. Yeah, the is, abuse yeah. that footballers get for commentating yeah. and an analysis, right, is unbelievable. Yeah. Because it's the biggest game in the world. Yeah. So yeah, you know, like, uh, people, people. So people, people yeah, slam yeah. for so, different reasons. Yeah, so people, uh, yeah, exactly. You know, he's getting to a position, or he's, and then Gary goes, he doesn't say you can yeah. go. But you have, and that's where you have to have a responsibility to make sure that you, if you're putting people forward. Mm that they're not going to get the abuse because maybe of the lack of the uh, preparation they've done to get in yeah. there. You know? So it's, it's, it's always difficult, always difficult. And it's, 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 it's never the presenter side either, is it? It's always the pundit or the co-commentator or the analysis. Yeah, because you know, that's where... That's, that's where your expertise yeah. are going to be shown, yeah. isn't it? The yeah. presenter yeah. might not know everything. No, the know presenters, enough. yeah. Some people... Yeah, John Emmerdell reading... Sports guy is ridiculous. Yeah. Then Stevie Ryder was into uh, motor racing. You know, that's what he loved. He but they were so professional, they could do everything. Yeah. Gabby, his love, and Sarah. I, I, I think as a presenter, that is a um, the, the only time that being a jack of all trades yeah. is, ex is yeah. acceptable. Yeah, but what you've got to do is, you know, you've got to, they, 
they facilitated the 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 the, the guests. Mm. So yeah, they can give an opinion, but sometimes you know I've, I've argued with the presenter. Wrong I, think, I don't agree with you. You know, or, well, you answered the question yourself. So, but then that's <laughs> that's when the the com and as a com as a pundit, you've got to explain what's. So she'll say what's what has happened. Or the, or the presenter will, um, you know, where they are. Same thing as a commentator will say, that's happened. My role as a pundit or a co-commentator is it's where it's happened. And if you can explain to the general public, and they all think they they know everything, and if there's one bloke in the house who goes, I didn't see that, then you're doing your job because you've explained why that incident. And my mum told me, why are you saying these passed out and you run through our gap? I can do that, my mum said. You can explain to people why they uh, why they do it. And I had a mentor called Peter Corrigan, who was a journalist from Penarth. Right? Okay. Um, and I used, I used to ring him up and say, "What do you think?" He said, "Are oh, you a shite today?" <laughs> so the same with your honest, mates. Yeah. yeah. Why are you, you saying that? that? Why did you do that? Why did you, why did you say that? Why are you sitting? Why are you slumping in your chair? Why are you wearing that audible coat for? Ooh. Oh, okay, thanks, Pete. So that, but you take you, you take yeah, idea. you take criticism of people you respect. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't go for a pint with some bell end on Twitter, would you? Yeah. And take his respect. So we would listen to his comments. And I think people who are doing it now got to harden up a little bit. You know, you say like, oh, you can't say that. You can't say that. If you put in front of people and they're going to give it to you, you got to, you got to be, you got to accept it a little bit, you know? Before we uh, go on, I, I just want to get you one more take on this. If they, with the regions now, if, they, if, if we had to have three... There's no answer to this. You know no, that, no, don't no. you? You got, you got the unions that can't work it out. You got fans can't work it out. I'm not going to be able to give you an answer. If, if, if there was three regions, <laughs> right? right if they, we got the four now. If they if they went down to three, you being a player who played for Clan Ethley, you played for Neath, who, 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 I, it's you know, who I would got, you take out? Oh, t- what If it's three, it's so hard. Yeah, I think you got Cardiff is Cabo City... Well, is that a good enough reason to keep them? I think it is. Clearly is West, um, so they've got all the ge- geographical area of that, okay? So you got that. But then Ospreys really is the only true region, and they're the ones who are doing the best. And I'm, and I'm a Neath captain who's in that area, right? So Take out the Dragons, is it? No, again, I, you know, maybe I've got no affiliation with the Dragons, um, but if you look historically... You know, they have been the worst ones. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you no, can't. I but then, but then I would then say, right? I, I would, I wouldn't say three cities. I wouldn't then, say, yeah. Or, or you go down to two, maybe east and west, right? Yeah. Or, but I wouldn't say, right? Um, we're down to three. You now you're going. You got to say, okay. There's a plan. There's transparency. There's a budget. If you get commercial uh, people in to run your um, regions and help. Fair enough. So in a season or two seasons, the worst side goes. There you are. That's fair, isn't it? Yeah, I think that is fair. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought about it. But, you know, there's... No, no, you're going to go put straws on I've you. Had some, no, but I wanted to ask you this, being a Slan Ethley boy, yeah, yeah. because Slan Ethley's a town, not, and, a, city, not a city. Yeah, but and everyone does talk about the three cities. Yeah, but you've got... You've they're, got the only, all, they're the only place to beat the All Blacks as yeah, well. No, that's, it's, that's gone, in there. But you've got... Icons, you've iconic. You've got... Look at the region they got. Pembrokeshire, Cardiganshire. Does it go you know, all the way all up to the way Wales down, as well? All the right, way All the right way back and all that, right? So yeah. it's, but you you know, I've got loyalties to all of them, um, maybe apart from the Dragons, but I, I wouldn't just, I wouldn't say the Dragons. I think there has to be some kind of plan in place to say, right, these are the boxes you've got to tick and maybe the best mm-hmm. side goes. But it's so hard, isn't it? You can't, because everyone's, look at, the, look at the size of Gwent. But then, but then, but then, but then yeah, but they can't. But then, the, for some reason, Newport can't connect with the, the some of the Gwent Valleys. And I think, why not? You know, Cardiff can't connect with Ponty. So you're thinking, right, there needs to be, why can't it be more harmonious and have a liaison guy in there to try and harmonise everything and everyone work together rather than everyone, you know, not trusting each other, slagging each other off, not supporting each other. It's it, it's so frustrating sometimes to me. And I that's why I, I'm not I'm not doing a lot of the URC at the moment because I get really frustrated and it's my, my own choice not to do it because I don't like going to places where there's lack of atmosphere and you know that they're trying the hardest and you know that maybe that it's unfair because 
they are now we've, we're we're starting to look like we're the kind of whipping boys, aren't we, at the minute? So it's 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 a yeah. tough watch, you know. It's a tough watch. Yeah. Just before we go on to you know the uh, the north and stuff, there was a uh, what happened in the Shrubs Cup final when you did sign for San <laughs> Uh I had this. Neath. I had this with uh, Jeremy Poole on on the lunch we had. Cause I I gone to Neath and they made me captain at twenty one and, and I loved it I loved it there uh, absolutely loved it it gave me the opportunity and they were great blokes great style of rugby entertaining great great laugh after um, but I just I had a kind of a thought that I might play for I might want to go rugby league but I want I then things Gary Pierce went north and there's no opportunity to go to Tlaethly, and I really maybe wanted to play for Tlaethly in my hometown, because I'd watch Phil Bennett play, and Barry, John, and Garrett, you know, and I, was, I used to go there with my dad. So I, I wanted really to play for the Scarlets, and Brian Thomas uh, called me and said, oh, are you going to sign for us next? I said, I'm not sure. He said, well, make it, let me know by Monday. If you're not, you can back off, basically. So they made the decision easier for me, and I went. Um... And they wanted they were looking for us to have uh, at the time. So I went. Uh, and we we are a good side, Scarlet. So I think we'd have been really powerful in the uh, in the they were powerful, I think we'd have been more powerful in the, you know, if we'd have kept everyone together. But I, yeah, I went to the final, Neat Lethley, fifty six thousand, watching the Chef's Cup final, uh, world record for a club game. And, that, that, uh, that's what I'm saying about mad, the club Lethley, game. Fifty six thousand for a club game. So the we went, yeah. Or? Off we went, and then they got up there, and, then, and you, you know, you wouldn't, in the old days, you'd have a telegram, you know, or a card, and you'd a letter, and you'd open it up, and then I remember my dollars give me a card, good luck, and all that. Then I opened this big card, I was a photo of me in the front with a, a noose around my neck, uh, and then R.I.P. Jiffy on it, and I signed by all the Neath players, and, uh, you know, and I, I always, I just, I kind of laughed it off a little bit, and, um, but Phil May and Phil Davis were there, and they said once they saw the look on my face, they knew they were going to win. There's no fucking way they're going to beat us that day after that. So they kind of motivated me to that, and, and we, and I, and I kind of flipped it tactically because they thought we were going to run everything. I turned them, turned them, and I frustrated them, and we took the opportunities, and we went, we beat them quite convincingly that day. So it was nice. And I'm man, 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 man of the match as well, so it's nice. So don't threaten Jiffy, is it? Yeah. That's, 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 that's the thing, is it? It's, I don't know, it is sometimes, you know, you, you press the wrong buttons, don't you? Yeah. It's like everything else. Um, you, you played with Teddy Holmes. He said on that slam documentary you played him for mm. a bit. How, how good, how, how much did you enjoy playing with Teddy? Oh. I worked with Teddy as well. You know, we work, we work, I worked in uh, a guy called Neil O'Halloran, signed, uh, we both worked for Action and Welding. They called us corruption and welding, but the matter. But the, it was, uh, it was, um, he, he, Neil Allen's a brilliant bloke, and I got to know Terry through working with him. And um, then when I when I watched him play, and I lucky to play with him a couple, you know, a couple of times, not not too many, a couple of times. But what a player, what a player! You know, he was just he epitomised, you know, a captain, um, a leader. Um, he was just, he'd do things out the ordinary when he needed to do it. He was hard as nails. And um, he was just a pleasure to play with him. And I got to know him really well afterwards. And, uh, he's, you know, he's had some tragedy in, in life as well with family. And he is one of the best blokes you ever come across in your, in your life, you know. And I had the pleasure of playing with him. And I, and I still think he's the best Welsh player I ever played with, you know. Really? Yeah. I saw him play some great players, like, you know. But I still think, if you if you talk to some of the boys, the, 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 he is held in. In, you know, a huge admiration he is, right? you know, and he followed Holmes, he, he followed Edwards, like so, but he was just, he's, and if you go to Bradford now, I work with Brian Noble and uh, Nobby was um, was playing Bradford, Bradford Northern when Holmes, he went there, and he's held in such high respect, and everyone thinks he went up there and he was broken, he was broken, he had his knee on his he, shoulder yeah, well, it, yeah. but they still hold him in, in 
huge. They're in awe of him up there as well. And that says it all about him. Great bloke, great player. You know, Sue's his missus is lovely, like your kids. It's just, he's just a, a down to earth, great bloke. What, um, so you come back off a triple crown win. You, you yeah. lose by one point against yeah. France. Yeah. You then have uh, the New Zealand tour, which yeah. just, you know. No, about, World Cup then. World Cup, sorry. Was it? No, I'm no, not. No, 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 World no, Cup no, first, no, no. 87. Yeah, we, then we went there. You're right. You are right. And then, I confuse them too. And then, and then on the back of that, you get slammed by Romania. Yeah. As Welsh captain, what were some of the some of the things in the papers? I didn't really about? care. I didn't really care. You know, you take you take the accolades and you t- and you take the criticism, right? It is what it is. You're in a position number ten for Wales, right? That's the way it is. I was captain, which has another bit of pressure. But at the time, we had new coaches in. The coaches wanted to have a new kind of uh, uh, style and put their own imprint on it. And I think they picked the wrong they they picked the wrong uh, <laughs> forwards. You know, and I think we were a bit soft going into that game. They were all in the army, them boys, and they battered us up front. And, you know, we didn't have the opportunities. We didn't, you know, we didn't create many and we lost. And as a captain, I, and I didn't, I didn't care about the press. I didn't care about the fans, about having a go. Maybe it was justified. But what, what I didn't like was the fact that uh, nobody in the union kind of backed me up or defended me. They just threw me to the wolves. And I thought, oh, well, that's, you know, if that's what they if that's what they do to the captains, you know, I've, I, I, I lost a lot of respect for it there and then. And maybe on the back of that was the one to think that, okay, am I, am I really wanted here? Am I really appreciated? And that, it just put that doubt in my mind. And uh, the boys from uh, the north then saw that little bit of doubt in me and down they came. And, it, and that's... And that's really it in sport, you know. I think I was still absolutely bouncing and play for Clancy. We were on fire, honestly. God. We were a, a brilliant side in that in that time. And I still think we'd have, you know, we could have won everything uh, playing for Clancy. Not uh, Nice and Clancy would have been the two sides. We were, but hey, once once you know the doubt from the I'm being if I'd have been dropped for Wales captain, if I'd been dropped for Wales, it wouldn't have sat well with me as well. I think so. That that's what happened really. So you sign for witness. Yeah. First of all, the backlash. <laughs> Didn't expect it really. You know, it's a bit. Because when you're when you're having armour in, and we, you know, we'd be, I didn't go on the back. We beat um, we beat Samoa then quite comfortably, and I scored against Samoa. I went after that, not after the Romania game. It wasn't after the Romania. No, no, I went after that. I think so. Um, I, I think it is, isn't it? I think. I, but yeah, I just uh, they came down. Um, they offered me. Um, you know, contract that I, 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 you know, we started negotiating, but um, Leeds came down first, then Warrington, then St Helens, and I won really ready. I met Omsey and uh, Ackers, Rob Ackerman in Leeds for lunch for dinner after watching the uh, a game up there once. Um, they they just came down and sold and, and sold with the witness story to me. They said, look, they're Martin the Fire, they're Alan Tate. They bought this in Mossy Coloto, played for Tonga, uh, Wellington against us, brilliant player. And they had a lot of good homegrown players there. And they said that, you know, I, they just sold sold the story. They were going to challenge Wigan. So um, I, I, I negotiated a deal. Um, I had a lawyer in, a guy called Malcolm Strewell, who was chairman of Swansea City at the time. Mm. So he understood uh, sporting contracts. And um, I didn't need an agent. I knew my own value. Sat down. He wanted seven years. I said, no. I said, three and a half. And they said, figure, I said a bit more. Um, and then Jim said, he said, I told him, if you give me that figure, I'll shake it on now, and I'll sign tomorrow. And he went, he rang up, got the committee, the committee said yes, he rang me at midnight, and I went to sign the next day. I gave him my word, so I, I, I didn't, and I didn't really understand the furor that it would, that would, you know, happen. Um, it was just mad, it was on the national news, and, <laughs> and everything and I was I was down here then when I went up there it was like bedlam up there the press were everywhere following me and everything um, because they thought that you know I'd never make it I think I think I talked to a lot of people and 99% didn't think that I'd make it <laughs> after the boys I played with didn't think I'd make it so um, but yeah you, you know you gotta have self-belief and uh, and off, off I went like and I knew I couldn't come back so there was no there was no option of failing 
I worked hard, trained hard. Um, I knew I was tough enough, like, you know, from where I was from. Um, and I knew how to avoid people, you know, so and I, I could get my elbows up quick, get my, my, my studs up quick. So I could look after myself and then, um, but it was hard. I didn't, I didn't expect, you know, the abuse that I, that I had up there and people on the boat, oh, you know, they're calling names, the names I was called. They were gobbing on me everywhere I went for the first three months, like I was gob on my face. What's that, the, uh, the fans? The, the other fans, yeah, yeah. Yeah, So everywhere I went, I was gobbed on. I just kept, what's, what's the point saying anything when you know, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to. What what kind of know, things are they saying? Oh, you know, they, they, like, I, everywhere. I, well, I still go up to, no one, you know, you have 5,000 fans, you know, I'm walking along the pitch and they still, all 5,000 fans go, sheep, shagger, sheep, shagger, sheep. You know, and they go, oh, we can waste the money, a wank of this and not. It was all going on, like, you know, it's like, there's a couple of funny ones as well. Um, you know, like somebody said, oh, you wank of David. Someone said, oh, pity his father wasn't. Um, loads of things like that, like coming up. But it was like, it was it was ferocious, like, you know. Everybody are like gangs, and they're all brave in gangs, right? And you put them on the field, like, they all shit those is. But like, it was just one of those things. But I, I also knew that, I, I, that motivated me because, you know, people gobbing on me. It was like I could wash it off, and then like I would say, right, they they they're worried about me, so I'd I'd, I'd spin that clear, into a, yeah, well, I'd spin that into a positive, right? You know, if they didn't worry about me, they would ignore me. Yeah. So I was abused like all you know everywhere you went, and then until they realised like the abuse wasn't washing, or the goblin wasn't washing on me, so it didn't it didn't really bother me. So I was like, you know, I've had worse than that. Yeah, yeah, but. <laughs> Uh, can you explain the difference in 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 league and, and union? What, what what were some of the things that you oh, quickly come to realise? I think it's well. First of all, it's density population. You know, if you look at it up there, Manchester, Leeds, uh, and Liverpool are big, big cities. Like, and then uh, you know the Greater Manchester area, and they were just it was a it was a a mental hardness up there that I that I maybe respected maybe, and it was more than in the union game because. It was their livelihoods. So they would, we were on 300 pound a win for winners, 40 pound a loss. So we drink the 40 quid after tax, like on a Sunday night. So it was a waste of time. A lot of the players would budget their mortgages on the on the wins and losses that they think they're having this season, right? Wow. So, you know, it was like, it was very um, kind of, uh, what would I looking for? Um, it, it was, it was, very professional, uh, and there was a lot of method in it. Like, you know, that's the game, win that one, win that one, we might not win that one, okay. So it was like, they were looking after their pennies, like, you know, and on the, and if it didn't play then, you know, they got injured, you know, they wouldn't they wouldn't get paid, only their salary. And the salaries were not, not great because they, the incentive was to win. Mm. So they, the mentality was really... Uh, the, the, Tough, the mental toughness was a, was a big factor for me, um, and they, and a lot of players would do a lot of things to to win games. You know, so. well, I think the fascinating thing is is when you go up there, in North Manchester, Liverpool, how big they are. You know, football in it, football oh. in areas, but 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 also rugby league. Yeah, well, Saint know. Helens is massive. Like you know, and, and if you look at Saints and Wigan, great tradition, great players. Um, then you go to, to to Leeds and to Hull. Like Hull, they've got two. Hull KR and, 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 and Hull FC, right? And the football side. Like, and they just ate each other, you know, and that was a really hard place to go up there. You know, they, they were tough, tough fans. But it, they have a they have a respect for you, which is great. And if I, could I play for Great Britain then, they had a little bit more respect for me and they supported me when I was playing there. Um, but it was just, it's like anything else. Wherever you go and you give everything to the, and, and the fans realise you give everything. And I lived in, I lived in Warrington and Widnes. I didn't live outside of the area, so... If we won, we won together. If we lost, we lost together. I'd end up singing karaoke in Witness Rugby Club on a Sunday night, pissed, like, you know, the fans would be laughing at us. So it was like, you know, you, you, you have to buy into it. If I was doing it, I, I, was, I was in 100%. I was, I was in it. And I, and I thought, I'm going to give it my best shot. If I fail, I fail, you know. But if I am not going to fail by not giving it my best shot. So, and that's, and I went, I went to a good team. 
Because when you look at some of the boys, like, you know, Martin ba- Fox, yeah, yeah. Well, Char- Charles is an amazing player, like, you know, and he had loads of stick as well, like, you know. So, I can imagine. You know, yeah. you know, me and him on the same side, oh, they love his like, washing the black guy. I, I, yeah, well, I just like, yeah, I give him a couple of dummies and he gets smashed and you go in. I said, well, I'm using you, I'm using you, Charlie. I'm using you. They want to ki- <laughs> kill you more than they want to kill me, like, you know. So uh, it was just, it was just funny, like, all the time, though. You know, oh, they fly into him, going on, mighty. So, um, but it was just, but I, I went, I went to a good team, right? Mm. And if I could break in that good team, I knew that I would win things and I knew it would put me in a position to play international rugby, right? Also what I did, I played in the wing first of all, but I knew that because I was goal kicking, they couldn't leave me out of the team. So I slowly, I could play centre, outside half or full back then. Um, and then that's what I, but I would, I'd know that they'd, whatever this best team would be picked, I would be picked in the team somewhere. I played full back, I loved it because I could see everything and then do the kick in. But when I played in the centre, I, I learned, I said, right, well, I play left centre because the ball comes quicker to me because people can pass a lot better right to left. And also, if I could run up quickly then, that because they were unsure of their passing left, they turned the ball inside and I'd, I'd have to make less tackles. So I kind of thought it through a lot. I kicked on first tackle sometimes, just still defences coming up. Because if you, you know, if you kick on first tackle, people go, what the fuck's he doing? Yeah. But, you know, I'd go to Charriers, Charriers, get on, get on my shoulder, son, draw the full back up, kick over the top. Either he wins and scores or we make 80 yards. So I was like, you know, I, I enjoyed trying new things out. And if people yeah. come out, if people come out too quick at the line, I could step them or go round them. You know, I was very comfortable beating was people. You, was you educated on league before you even went no, to league? never seen again. <laughs> wow. Never seen it. So I don't that's, know. that's a raw talent there. So though, I floodlight the Lions on a Tuesday night where they all kick shit to each other. The what? It's called the Floodlight Alliance League. Okay. On a Tuesday night, it was on a 10 past eight on BBC Two, right? And then they just kick shit to each other, right? And the, and the, dumb, and the little horrible floodlights. And I, I got to know, you know, the names of the boys up there then. And, um, but then, um, obviously I watched the Challenge Cup finals in Wembley. Yeah. I loved watching them. Uh, and I respected, you know, them as, as rugby players. So, um, but I just, no, I'd, I'd never actually seen a do one you, game. Do you think any rugby player has the potential to play both codes? It's, uh, it's harder than what you think. You know, it's... Going rugby league, uh, you got to you got to have a real, you know, tough, tough uh, mental game. Because you're gonna get the abuse, you're gonna get the physicality of it. Because it's it's more one on one, and they and they bash you a bit. Even more, you know, when I when I went to Australia, it's even more. That's the toughest comp I've ever played, and I and I and I loved it down there. And I they I should they offered me three years. Uh, Bulldogs did, but I I just sent. Did you win Man of Steel in Australia? No, I won. Um, I won it in Warrington when I went to Warrington. Because witness bought, witness bought, funny witness bought me for a world record fee, and you they let me they let, let me go on a free free transfer. Yeah, but you had maybe because I went to Warrington and they were weren't as good More as witness. And I, I, you know, you lifted I, I, the team. I, I wouldn't say lift them, but they said I set standards there. But I could score tries that maybe they didn't have a player who could score before. And Alan Bateman was on the other side, and we, and as a pair, I think we lifted. We had Ke- Kelly Shelford had a great season. Kevin Ellis played well that year, so we, maybe we lifted the whole side up to overachieve. And we nearly won the. Mm-hmm. Did you, did you feel like playing for Warrington was kind of uh, the, the remnant of playing for Wales Rugby Union? Is that? Uh, it was odd because. Player, it would pull stuff well, I went, back. Again, you know, I went, when they said, like, you know, you've got to go, Jeff, we can't afford your salary, it was a bit of a surprise. Well, when they offered you seven years and, and then you uh, said yeah, three exactly, and a half. Yeah, is, yeah, and then they still, and then I signed, I, signed another more, I signed a bit more then after that. Because I always, I always used to play, I always used to score good tries and play well when my contract was up. <laughs> funny, funny that, like, but then it's um, it was uh, Castleford came in, Wakefield came in, Wigan had a little, you know, a little bite on me. Um, but I Warrington because my, my family lived in in Widnes. Warrington's only seven miles away, so we have to upheaval again. And I had good friends in Warrington on and off the field, and I could see the potential in them. If I went there, that I could, you know, maybe help them a little bit more. But then that drove me again because I was going to retire. You know, I was, I was everything. Yeah, I was going to finish playing. You know, I thought I've had. What yeah. year was this? Uh, that was '93, maybe. You know, and, and, and you already won the two cups with Widnes then, yeah? Yeah, yeah, won any Widnes, yeah. Great Britain. Yeah, done. Played captain Great Britain, everything. 
Mm. And then I thought, you know, maybe I got like sun ache a little bit, but that changed, gave me the incentive, and it motivated me again. And then when I went to Warren, I said, like, I'll show him now. Because when I was when I was going to Warrington, you know, they used to boo me. They were the biggest rivals all the time. So when I went there, I, I loved I loved it down there, you know. And I just wanted to play. And then I went I went Man of Steel there, and I and I scored a try in Wembley when I was in Warrington. Well, so did you won stuff at Warrington then as well. No, no, we um, we win. No, I think we didn't, but we we lost on points difference oh. the championship, the the full league, to Bradford and to Wigan, and they were better side than us. But we toughed it out and we pushed them all away. And the worst thing was, there was one game we were playing Wigan, and um, it was a hell of a game. It was uh, six all, I think it was. It was the last minute, and uh, somebody went through, and Paul Cullen came in and dropped on on him. And he gave a penalty. And I ne- I've never, I went to the referee, you are a cheating, C-U-N-T, right? And he marched me back 10 yards. Then I knew what Fran Obotka wasn't going to miss that kick, right? And then as we were coming up to kick off again, <laughs> I, um, the referee, the hooter went, I just gave it to him, the referee again. He came chasing after me with the red card after the game. I was like, fuck off. Oh, and we lost. And if we'd have won that game, most, most likely, we, you know, we would have won the championship. But we, so it was, um, and I think we just that those particular season, that particular season, Warrington like really played well, and everyone played well, um, and that's why I enjoy what, I enjoyed it there, you know. What, what was your best time of rugby? Was it was it playing league? I think I think leagues are the best to me. Yeah, I think they did. You achieved more. Um, Trophy wise, yeah, I'd, and... I'd player of the year in rugby. I had you know, rugby union player of the year. I won player of the year in Wales. Well, I won. Just, the uh, silverware um, wise, yeah, you, you, know, you, you were more successful. Yeah, yeah, on a national, you know, but again, not on a national level because well, we went to New Zealand, beat won the series in New Zealand. Um, then we beat New Zealand. Then we beat New Zealand at home, three uh, nil. Um, never beat. That's my regret. And I when I when I played against them in Wembley, I played against. I, I, I never. I was never scared of the Aussies because I played down there. Scored tries against them down there. Scored tries against them for winners at home against Australia when he toured. Scored against them in. That went Lolly Daly. No, that was uh, I, no. I, well, I scored against him as well in World Cup Championship. Um, yeah, sorry, that was. Yeah, him. and I, then I then I I scored from in Wembley, and that's a, the regret they had was I, I got injured after about sixty four minutes in that game. I didn't play for ten weeks. I popped my clavicle joint, and I still think that maybe if I was playing for Great Britain in that series, I maybe we could have beaten them because mm. I I was like I wasn't I wasn't scared of them. So yeah. I, and I and I maybe I, was, you know, I could do some things that maybe the the you know the fullback would yeah. place we couldn't do it. So you, know, you never know. That's what sport. This is sport. It's so brutal sometimes, you know. But um, when just you... enjoy, I just enjoyed it. Like and the challenges that that they threw up against me, and um, I just wanted to be to show people what I could do. And having left Wales as well, and Wales weren't going great in the nineties. To say like you know like a you know try and keep Wales ambassador, you know, like kind of ambassador all up there. Yeah. Loved it. No, I understand that. Oh, it's brilliant because, you know, when when Wales came together as well, you know, you had, you know, boys who were struggling maybe in their sides and maybe regretting going. And all of a sudden, when we came together, oh, we had such a great side, like tough boys as well. You, know, you had Ford, Phil Ford, Gerald Cordell, Anthony Sullivan mm-hmm. is up there, Yeston Harris who was 17, Kieran Cunningham, Kelvin Skerritt, you know, Mark Jones, Scott Gibbs, John Devereux. What year was that? Die Young. Oh, they were all hard as nails, all these blokes. What like, year was that? It's 95 hours. It's when you come back. Yeah. I used to come back. That's a funny thing. Come back. And I, Clive Griffiths is a coach. You go, right, uh, we all get together on a Wednesday. Right? We play on a Sunday. We got absolutely shit face on a Wednesday. Absolutely, you know, have a great... But they would bring everyone together. Yeah. And the English boys and the boys, you know, we'd never heard of and met before. Brought them all together. But then I tell Clive, Clive, we can't train tomorrow at 10 o'clock with all bollocks, man. <laughs> so, no, you're training 10 o'clock tomorrow. I said, Clive... Listen to me now. I know my players. I know you. Two o'clock. Two o'clock. I make sure we're all there. And anyone who's not 100%, fucking they'll have it. And then we self-managed then, because I remember the first pass, Martin Hall put to Kevin Skerritt. And it was a bad pass. Kevin Skerritt ripped strips off him. like, And I knew I'd done the wrong, right decision. So everyone respected each other, you know? And we had a good time, you know, good time on and off the pitch. Well, um, you never played for the Lions, did you? no. I went, I went, uh, I went in 89, um, 
you know, there was rumours that, you know, maybe I'd be one of the candidates for captaincy for the Lions 89. Um, but it's, it's one of those things, I think, again, it's, I, I told my crew shirts. When I played for Neath, I told my, my crew shirts. And, and the surgeon said, you know, I was 19 years of age, you might never play for you never play rugby again if you don't have an op. Um, so that was a big kind of mental thing to go through. Um, then I had a chance with Neath. And then when they, you know, because I left, I left school at sixteen. It was because my dad passed away. You know, I, um, I didn't have any security, I suppose. And when they came in and said, "Look, we'll give you world record fee," I, I thought, mm. and that's, that's maybe a regret. I should have stayed until after the Lions and then gone. But maybe I wouldn't have gone then, and maybe my career wouldn't have gone well, the think, same I way. Think so stars align as well. And when you look at like how things happened, yeah, you know, the, the, yeah. after the New Zealand tour, then the loss. It, it yeah, does sound it, like it yeah. made sense. Were you yeah, done? Yeah, maybe. You know, I, I do regret, I, and I do regret not playing for the Lions. And I'm the biggest advocate for the Lions. People are going, oh, is there a is there a place for the Lions now? You know, when you uh, you know, where there's a World Cup and all professional, so you, that the Lions having missed out on it, you know, it's got to survive because it's one of the greatest traditions, one of the greatest sides in, mm. in world sport. Yeah. You know, you, you played Great Britain rugby and, yeah. and, that's, and that's an achievement in itself. Yeah, you know, we went on tour New Zealand and we won 2-1 on, on tour New Zealand. And you know, Bish was there, like, and Chariot was there and Gary Schofield was there. And, you know... Oh, that's a team. I know, we are, you know, and everyone wrote us off. We we had about ninety percent against us territory ninety because ninety percent possession right and we won the first test ten nine and won the second test eleven ten oh we won those two tests I know we had two chances I scored in the first Charlie scored in the second with with um with Scoey. we won this, we were two nil up in the series it was unbe unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable you know. Um, we went to Papua New Guinea before the tour for three weeks oh, oh my god yeah. what, what was that like? give us a story. <laughs> Well, it's just, <laughs> you couldn't make it up, man. You know, just, you couldn't get out of your hotel. Uh, because people said it was cannibalism. I was like, okay. Uh, and then we had, like, we played in the game. Um, people would walk for days because it was their national game. They were spear, they were good spear tackling them day, so they'd drill you into the ground, right? The ground was like that as well. So they'd get your arm between your legs, drill you into the ground. So we had to practice and training to hold each other up in the tackle or go to ground. And then one game, you know, there was people unhappy because they walked for days to come and see the game and they they, were, they weren't allowed in because it was packed. So they started throwing stones onto the pitch, right? I mean, like, not small stones, like boulders onto the pitch. And then all of the uh, military, military police or cops came on and started shooting tear gas into the... Have you had tear gas before? No. There we are. Hey, let me tell you. On the floor with tear gas in your eyes, it's just... It's not nice. And all of a sudden, the, the next thing he goes, the referee goes, look, after 10 minutes, okay, play on. Fucking lost that. Lost that test. Is, <laughs> is, it, is it true uh, Di Bishop was uh, shooting shooting the tear gas as well? That's what I got oh, I don't know. I used to funny die on tour. He nearly got sent home once because he's going to hold in a scrap. And me and Joe Lydon stuck up for him and so they didn't send him home. He's funny die. Then he, I remember being in a fight. Di, like was in a, We played against the Maoris. And it was a brutal fight. I, 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 somebody dragged me back and I swung a punch. I caught him so sweet, like sparked him. Die, die, bitch running behind me going, Oh, great punch, Jeff, great punch. I went, I didn't know it anyone, like, you know. And then he's in the middle of the field and he, and it's him and it, one of the two Mavavi brothers. And they fight them and die hits him with a pearl out of a punch and then everything stopped fighting and we won the game, like. So, yeah, you, when you get tours like that, when you look after each other, it's, it's different because you're playing. With your backs to the wall in in most hostile places, Papua New Guinea against the Maoris, you know it, it does bring the best out of you, and you know who your mates are in our team. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's why I think you know to, it would have been so nice to see you at a Lions tour back yeah, then I as think, well. Because we hear those stories. I, yeah, I think I was made. I, I think I was made for you know like a, a Lions team as well because you know Je, you know you know Jerry and. Lawrence Delalio and Jason Leonard and Gibbsy and Yeyan, you know, yeah. I, I think Would socially I'd have fitted in as well with them. Boys, the, you know? Well, in the late, in the, in the mid-90s, Lions team. 89, 90, I went, I was up the north for 93, so I missed that one as well. Mm. I missed the part in 85 because it was a part I didn't go. So I missed early, eight, mid-80s, missed 89 Rugby League, missed 93 Rugby League. 97 I came back, but Geech uh, was a Northampton coach. 
he took the load of Northampton players. Uh, but, you know, maybe I was just past it by then. Well, on, on, on the Slam documentary, talking about a tour, you, you, the Fiji tour was meant to have been a bit of, you had a big scrap, was it? Again, that was hard. You know, we went there and they just, you know, kicked the living day out of us, really. Um, it was brutal. You know, it was a hell of a hard tour. And like, again, you know, moulded us all as a, as a good bunch of mates, you know, because mm. miles away from home, I was in hospital on a Tuesday with a late tackle. He, and he's not, he was there and Mark Brown was in hospital on the Saturday after the test. But we won the, te- we won the three tests, you know. And, um, you know, it just brings you together and you have a... You look back and think, oh, I was mad, like, you know, it's dangerous. Yeah. I remember lining up behind, you know, like a an outside shed, all having tetanus injections into our asses, like, you know, after being out there, we should have had them before we went. <laughs> but, like, it's... It, 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 you know, we were, we were amateurs. Yeah. We didn't know any different. We just wanted to play and enjoy it, you know? Well, as, as an amateur, we, I should have said this earlier, but just, 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 what was the restrictions as an amateur? What do you mean? Well, you hear, like, you know, we weren't allowed to talk to press or... Well, you couldn't talk to rugby league players, scouts, that's the first thing. But, you could, yeah, I think it was more open then because there was an element of the press that you trusted because they were with you all the time. And then the ones that, the, you know, that comes down for the, the scandals, which, you know, we had a few of them. Um, you know, you just didn't trust them because you know they were just going to blow it up and you on the front page or the back page of the, you know, Sunday Daily Mirror or something like that. So, but no, I think there was a there was a mutual trust in those days because journalists travelled with you a lot. Uh, we had, a, you know, we weren't scared to go out and have a couple of points after the game, win or lose. It didn't bother us because there was no social media cameras. Yeah, we kept ourselves disciplined. You know, we de- we we knew where the guidelines were, were what's right and wrong. So anyone who stepped over the line, we just pulled him back into line, you know, and all that. So it was just, you couldn't, you, you had to respect what you were doing. And, you know, everyone says, oh, you drink this and drink that and you're going out. But you weren't because you still, you train like a professional, even though an amateur game, and you set your own standards. And the sides I played for set standards in the fi- on, the, on the fitness field. And they, they self-manage like incidents then. So, but it was just, we had, we had a couple of points after the game, you know, which, and we enjoyed each other's company. Um, and we trained out together and we respected each other, um, respected the opposition, um, and respected kind of where we were in uh, being out in the general public. So it was, it was, they were good days actually, you know, it was, it was, people say, oh, would you change now? Obviously you change if you're earning a million pounds a year. Would you have, would you have stayed in the WIU if it turned professional? I think, yeah, I think I would have. You know, if, if I was getting paid to play the game that I loved and grew up, you know, wanting to play, and my my ambition was to play for Wales and play for the Lions. Um, and if I was getting paid to do that as well, yeah, you know, most likely the temptation mm. of money and security. Because it was all about security going to North, really. That's what it was all about. Because, I, you know, when I went up there, I was having the same money in the job I was working with, plus the lump sum that they, they gave me, plus... Mm. You know the three hundred pound a game winning, and we won more than um, more than you know most sides. So mm. it was just the only hurdle was is, is could I make it, <laughs> which is yeah. which is quite a big one. But you, that's where self belief comes in, you know. Yeah, well, you said that you know mo- you know a lot of the team, the witness team you played, a lot of them could have played into yeah. you know you yeah, well, all of them. Yeah, I think yeah, Andy Carrier went to play for London Welsh. You know, they were all good players. Colotto, yeah. They were all the same. Mm-hmm. I think all of the backs could have played professional rugby, professional rugby union. But it is hard physically and mentally it's hard going rugby league and you've got to learn very, very quickly. Otherwise, you know, if you there's no... Reputation means nothing. If you don't perform, you're out. John Gallagher came over as as the um, greatest player in the world rugby union after the World Cup, all blacks. And he, was, and he struggled a little bit mentally because, you know, he may be gone to the wrong club. So, and then coming the other way then, you know, Jason Robinson's done it on the wing, right? And the wing is a lot easier. If you come like centre, outside half, or loose uh, wing forward or something, then it's harder and it's technically harder and, the, and, and it's, it's a lot, the game is more complicated because of the, the laws of the game. Yeah. So it's, it's very difficult coming, coming that way. And, and they, I think they've wasted, they didn't know what to do with a lot of the players, Sam Burgess, Faz, yeah. Justin Harris, Henry Paul, world-class players in league, and they would have been world-class players in Union as well. 
but they weren't managed properly. So your last game, uh, you played, well, you played the last game in Cardiff Arms Park know, before yeah. it turned to the Millennium. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever wish you played in the Millennium Stadium? Oh, you got to have knew. You know, I commentate there and it's like unbelievable. The atmosphere, I think, is the best stadium in the world. And did you see that difference? You know, you're not, not playing... really, not really. You know, I just think it's, when you get a new stadium, people think, oh, you know, is it, will it be as good? This one's better. Yeah, That's I think brilliant. Cardiff City to the thing, there's a lot of talk in yeah. football, Ninian yeah. Park, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, I think it's, it's it's been brilliant because the way it's been built and, and where it is, it's an amazing stadium. But um, I played the last game, played against a very good England side, yeah. went on to win. That was the, They were the crux of the 2003 World Cup team. So, I, you know, I played them. And we knew we'd beaten by a better side, but uh, I finished with Rob Andrew and Will Carlin. Same game. They, they, that was their last game. They finished, game. last game for them as well. And they beat this convincingly. And hey, if you dream of opening your international career, playing against England at Cardiff Park, right, and winning, and then you've got a chance to finish your career, maybe you're losing against England in, in the Cardiff Arms Park again, after being in rugby league for six years, mm. You, you you know, you couldn't have made that up. You could not have made it up. So I was happy on that. Because Cardiff asked me to play for another season. Uh, what's his name? Alex, the, the Australian coach. Um, but I just I did enough for then, I think. Yeah, you've really gone full circle. Yeah, I've gone, and yeah. And I, I played, you know, I made my debut in 1985. And I and I finished in 97. And I played international rugby. You know, for twelve years in two different codes in, in two continents, so it's not, it's it's not a. You only look back, you think. I think I've, you know, mm. I've, I've got as much as I can out of my body, you, to be honest. You truly are a, a legend of not just Welsh rugby, but but rugby That's a big as a whole. Yeah. I it's think a big John. word. That is like you know, as long as I you know I got there now, and it's you know, you're legend and all this. You like you get embarrassed about it, like. But as long as you you, you play sport to create memories, and you create memories for yourself. But also, when you finish, you, you realise you create memories for people who are there watching. Mm. You know, it's like go to something and say, oh, yeah, we need to go try against Halifax. Let's go to try, you know, we need to go try in, in Leeds against New Zealand. You remember that try down in the, the Bulldogs down in... in yeah. and, I, and that's what that's what it's all about. If I remember them, and people remember them, and people people still come up to me and give me, you know, tell me tries I scored and I can't remember anymore. Didn't you, didn't you like, play uh, against Wigan in Swansea in a rugby league game? Trick. Uh, what was Alec going back home smart, to play yeah. rugby league? Yeah, exactly. I came back, like, and you think... Well, well, how, how did they play it It's there? a charity shield, right? So they played so all over. They, they went... Trying to promote rugby we league won, in Wales, We won right? the league. They won the cup. Okay. So then all of a sudden, we're down there, and we're playing in a neutral ground. They said, trying to promote the game. I come down, this Wigan... You might, you know, pressure on there then. And all of a sudden, I scored a trick in the veg. About a lot of local people were oh, there. Oh, I was right? like, yeah, loads. You know, we came back and watched... But it was nice. I scored a trick, you know, coming back for Wales. I scored a trick against Wilkin. Unbelievable. You know, I just couldn't write the yeah. game. Yeah. So. In your in your career, any regrets? Yeah, I think, like I said, not not going on a Lions tour uh, with one second one. Then having it gotten injured with, um, you know, when I scored in Wembley and missing out the next two games of the series. Maybe not having a couple of, maybe not having a couple of seasons in the NRL. So I think I was made for the NRL because it's all about pace and you know um hard grounds and everything. Um so maybe maybe those three. But you know, if you ask you know, Captain Wales in re- League and Union, Captain Great Britain, uh you know, you have one player of the year in both codes. It's, not bad, is it? It's not, you know, and you know it's 11 and a half stone playing for Wales and I finish at 12 and a half stone so it's uh, <laughs> my, body's, my body's aching a bit now but I think yeah, yeah, and I think what I've enjoyed through it all I've respected everyone that I've played against and I think you have respect you you earn respect back and it's nice and whenever I go now in league or reunion and whatever I bump into there's you know it's always nice to, nice to see those boys mm. yeah definitely what about off the pitch you know you've uh you, you had a driving ban. A few regrets, I guess. Yeah, off the fish. That's the one that everyone. But does, does, doesn't 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 anyone have them regrets? You know, I, I always say this: you you make sometimes. Life's life is like tough, and you got to enjoy the good times because there's going to be tough times, and you make decisions in life sometimes that you you regret and, you know, you you've apologized for, but 
you don't know what's going on in the, in, in the background to, to create those mistakes. Um, as long as you learn from them um, and, you, and you put it right with people if you've upset people, yeah. that's, that's the main thing. So, yeah, you know, f- through regrets, you're there and everywhere along the way. Um, but that's, it, you know, I, I can look back and say it's, I think if you have a little bit of humility about you, you know, I think that's a key word. Um, and that's that's the important thing. Um, and I always say it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice, you know. Mm. And I think it's, well, I've, I've been lucky. I, 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 I've, got, I've got myself surrounded with some great friends, uh, good family. And I think, as you said, you, you've got to look at, you know, your lot at the end of the day when I put in that box and, and see, you know, if you've, if you've given it your best shot. That's about it. What was the lowest point of your career? Um, I think as um, I told my, it was really hard. I told my crew shirts when I was nineteen. I don't. I, I was really fit. I was, I'd work my socks off in training. Um, but then I told my crew shirts when I was nineteen. I thought that was the end of my career. Um, that was that, that that was a hard fourteen months. I was to come back from, um, and I you know I, I always wonder how good I would have been if you know if I'd have had two good knees, you know. So that was that was maybe one knock back in my career. Um, losing against Wigan in the Challenge Cup final because we didn't play well for Widners was one. Um, and again, maybe losing against France in um, in that Grand Slam game by one point. You know, they, they, were, they went against us. They were a good side. How things would have been different maybe for those mm. things. But as you say, you just... Hey, Take it up for the smooth, Matt. Take it up for the smooth on, in sport and in life. You do a lot for for, for, for the cancer charity. Yeah, Belinda. yeah. Um, I think you you just done a bike ride. No, I'm doing one tomorrow. Doing one? I'm doing tomorrow. I've been on a bike since thing. So, but I, you know, people say it's, it's about giving things back, and then and the two things. You know, my, my dad passed away with the cancer. Mm. My wife passed away with cancer, and they're traumatic. You know, and um, I, I had a great stepdad in Ken, um, and I'm. Up, really happily married now to Jay. Um, so, you know, you've got to overcome those things in life, you know. And um, if you do give something back, I've given something back to, to Valindre and the team in Valindre. They're all amazing, all the ambassadors and all the people who work there and the staff, mm. fundraisers. They're just, they're just incredible. And, you know, the feedback that you have from people that are going through cancer and their, and their family or friends, yeah, and it, and it means the world because they say how great the staff are in Valindra and, I, and I've known them through my own experiences. But also they say that without the fundraising that, you know, everyone's been involved to raise, you know, some of them, some of them people wouldn't have survived. So when How people, much have you raised? I think so, oh. since I've been involved now, uh, I don't like say I've raised it because it's a massive team effort. But yeah. I, since I've been there with a, uh, my involvement, I think it's, I think it's more about 47 million now. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's quite pleasing when you, people come up to you and say thank you very much because my wife wouldn't be here without the, you know you people. It means a lot. That does it means a lot. And and it's not just again like you said like losing your wife or your father that you you know the adversity you've come through staying on the right path to become a professional rugby player and to continue playing professional rugby. But you've also gone through divorces and stuff in yeah, your life as yeah, well. Like yeah. for people out there, like it's just uh, like, you know life's very tough, very right. life tough. You know, and if you can look yourself you know in the mirror and you've done the best that you can, yeah, you, you regret you regret I'm divorced. You know, but my ex wife is really happy now. Um, you know, the kids have come through it um, I'm happy and I think life life is for living and you know don't be scared to make changes that you think can improve your life mm. um, and it is it's just you've, you've got to look at it and realise that you know it's 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 a tough life, life is tough and you've got to enjoy it when it's going well because you know that sooner or later something's going to crop up and it's not going to be that great Greatest Welsh team that you've witnessed? Oh, hang on, that's a tough one, Alice. You know, it's, you can't, I, I don't think you can judge or compare generations. You know, I, I think that the side, the Welsh side, winning the Grand Slam in the 2000s were a good side. Having come through professionalism, you know, never thought I'd, I'd see another Grand Slam. I was hoping I'd see a World Cup win by Wales, you know, but unfortunately that hasn't happened. 
But for... What when, what when did you think we should have won? 2011. The, uh, France. Yeah, when, Alan Roland, when Alan Roland sent uh, Sam Wolf, off. I, didn't, I, I don't think he should have been sending off. No. I think that, that, was, was, the best, that was the best opportunity we had of winning. Um, and But then if you look back, you know, I think looking at maybe the 78 Welsh side, yeah, they were, they were a great side. They were... That's the best side I've ever witnessed. Um, but I, I don't like comparing generations of yeah. players because they go, oh, you know, is it Gerald Davis or Shane Williams? Well, they both would have been brilliant whatever era they played. Is it Gareth Edwards or Terry Holmes? They would have been the best players. You know, if, it's, if people ask me, is it Barry John or Phil Bennett? I'm going like, well, I, you know, I love, the, I love the both of them. Yeah. They were both good friends of mine. I was great friends with Di Watkins. I never saw Di Watkins play. Cliff Morgan, was, I loved Cliff. I didn't see Cliff play. You know, you, would would you be better than them? I know. I don't know. What about if I said Thorburn and Jenkins better kicker? You'd say Jonathan Davis. Oh, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> I would, no, I, I would. I'd actually say right. I'd actually say this. Of all the best goal kickers I have ever seen, um, I think Neil Jenkins. If I'd have put money on somebody kicking a goal for me to win the match, and I have huge respect for Dan Carter, Johnny Wilkinson. Um, Phil Bennett, this thing was Ollie Campbell, Johnny Sexton, Nas Porter, um, all the great desk kickers. Line her. I tell you what, I still think for me, and it's my own opinion, Neil Jenk is the greatest kicker, goal kicker I have ever seen. I could probably won't argue with you on that <laughs> one. Oh, you know, you know, that's that's what opinions are for, isn't it? You yeah. have a different one, yeah. you have a different one, but I say on this day. <laughs> He was the best. Okay, okay. then. Well, we, we're in the middle of the Six Nations yeah. as as we speak. Um, hasn't been the greatest uh, performance. No, we are where we are at the moment. We are where we are, and I think that's through um, transitional period for the regions and the Welsh team. A lot of retirements, a lot of players, you know, leaving to go uh, to have a payoff for the end of their careers, which I totally understand, and I, you know, I admire them for it. Uh, do you mean the Lewis Re Summit thing? I don't care. Okay. He's because he's not he's, he's end got, of career. No, is he? he's got to live his dream, and he's you know he's got ten he's got ten weeks. If he fails, he come back. If he makes it, fantastic. You know you got to follow your dream. But you look at George North going to a second division club. Great for George. Um, you know anyone who crosses the bridge or goes to Japan. It's a, you know I, good good luck. You know and enjoy it because it's a short career, and that's where we are at the moment. We've had the rush youngsters in. Um, some of them aren't ready for regional rugby, especially when you you know we're now playing against the South African teams and the Irish teams, and you know they're they're really going well. But you know we've got to look at, at where we are, how we're going to improve, how we need to play now, and the test will be huge against uh, France and Italy still. And then they've got, I think they've got South Africa and Australia coming up in the summer, so it's not going to be any easier for them, right? But it's a learning process for them now, and they gain experience. But hopefully, for me. The union and the regions will work in harmony somehow, um, and they do what's best for each other. Um, and we put money into development so that the kids are given a, a platform that they can achieve the most that they can. Uh, and then in eight years' time, you know, we'll be back challenging for a World Cup. So, yeah, it, it, the, the question I was going to ask is, do we need to change things or do we stay on this trajectory? Well, the board is, uh, you know, they, there's a new executive board there now. And they've brought new people in. Um, you know, don't know much about them, um, but I hope that they make the right decisions, which are you know beneficial to not not only for you know for Wales, but you know for the regions, uh, because without the regions, you're not going to have a good Wales, and without the grassroots and the, and the youngsters in the academies, you're not going to have a good region. So it all adds up, and it's up to them to work out you know what's best. You know, and you can't. And that's the hard thing. We can always give opinions, but you can't actually say what's needed until you're in the inside. You know, that's 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 the crux for me. And they've got to learn and look at how Ireland have done it. And they're, you know, they're doing it well. Um, or in New Zealand. Um, and not just f maybe follow them, but look at them and say, right, what's what's best for Wales? And what's the best way for us to play? Um, but I think it's all about, you know, the development and and the trust and the, you know between everyone. I'm not going to speak this into existence or touch wood, but the last time we won the wooden spoon was in 2003. Um, I don't know if you remember that team, 
But do you think the team we have to, in this day and age right now That's a tough one, uh, is it, a better team? I think it's hard, it's hard to say, you know, I think because maybe at this side of the round us are getting better and they're moving faster, you know, in, in the right direction than maybe we are. So I think that, you know, it's it's going to be a tough ask. Um, but I think people have got to be patient and, uh, and realise that, you know, what position we're in and not go... Having a little bit of balance, a little bit of perspective and not going off their heads and slagging everyone else. Yeah. I agree. Maybe that question was a bit harsh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I can remember 2003, that long ago. Yeah, yeah. I seen a photo, of, it was a very old, old, well, young team at the time, it was the yeah. old Rockport we had on yeah, the, long time, the journey. Yeah. Long time, yeah. Um, I just got some questions, just a couple of questions off the fans, all right, yeah, and before we go, all right. So, Darren Tyson says, who's the best player he played with both Union and League? Who is he? He could have come and asked me a League and Union, I think it's, uh, I think, Ormsey and, oh, and then maybe Campisi, you know, Campisi I played with, uh, Sella was brilliant, Michael Jones, so many, you know, because I played for so long. Um, rugby League, Elry Hanley was special, but maybe Andrew Johns from Australia, great player. Paul Price, where does he see Welsh rugby in 20 years' time? Well, again, hopefully in the lot of the position we are today and learn learn from, you know, what's happening now. Um, and hopefully, you know, we can we can improve. So a lot better, I hope. Uh, a lot of talent out there. There's a lot of talent yeah, out there. Yeah, definitely. It's, I think it's about tapping into yeah, it, isn't it? Yeah. Joe Matem, uh, it's kind of some of these we might have gone over, but in, yeah. get in a nutshell, basically. What was the pinnacle? Playing for GB in League or Wales in Union? Wales in Union. That was, that was my ambition. Achievement, Gripen. Yeah. Um, who was better? Nine. He played with Di Bishop or Robert Jones. I think Dave personally. It's a tough one to ask, guys. They, they both. I'm gonna sit in the fence on this one. They both had their. They both had their strengths. <laughs> <laughs> and I sit on that one. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. I have two phone calls now. Yeah. One of, one of Rob, one of Bish. Yeah. <laughs> Matt Blythe, uh, how can the regions actually be competitive going forward? Well, they have to work together with the union and then look at development and resources. And if you was the head of WRU, no, short-term and long-term changes? But I'm not. That's the difference. I've said you've got to be on the outside. You've got, you've got to be on the inside, not on the outside. You only want, you know, the, the, uh, but if they, if they have transparency, you know, that that's not on the plan, well, you know, that'll be a good start. Who was the hardest player you played with? I respect every player that I crossed the line with and without, uh, with, for, and played against me. So, you know, you go from Dai Young, Omsi, Bish, Ellery Anley, Martin Johnson, Buck Shelford. There's a guy called David Gillespie in Australia. His nickname was Cement. You know, so... If they, the men, if, yeah, if they yeah. caught you, you know, and you didn't, and you, you didn't ride the tackle, you'd, you'd, you'd get hurt. Yeah. But most, you know, you get some dirty players, which I didn't have much respect for, but the hard boys just did their proper jobs. Yeah. And finally, Phil 740 says, who was the worst coach you worked with? <laughs> Phil Ford, no. <laughs> worst, worst coach, oh, there's a guy in Australia called uh, Grant Bell. He was the worst for me. He just uh, brought a losing mentality into the into the change room because he'd coached a uh, poor side before. And who was your best coach you played with? Uh, again, it was... Uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, can't remember his name. No, no, it's Anders. I his first name. Just say Marion. Uh, Just say uh, Marion. Just say your school teacher, Marion, isn't it? Yeah, you know, Marion. Mary, 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 he, 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 he was the best. He was a, he was a coach. He instilled... Good discipline and uh, and just made me work my core skills all the time. So he was it. John, Jeff, it's been a pleasure. Pleasure at to last. You. It was worth the uh, worth the wait. I hope. Yeah, I, hope, been I, great. Hope, I hope everyone enjoys it. I hope well, everyone enjoys what it. What we do with all our guests is we ask them to see us out down the camera with a positive message, maybe to you know youngsters playing playing rugby. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah, years. yeah. Uh, like, like I've said in the podcast. Life is full of ups and downs. Enjoy the good times, right? 
and uh, stay strong in the in the bad times. But try and enjoy every little bit of it. Okay. The Central Club.